So it looks like we're recording. Um, did you want to stop sharing, Isaac? Or did you want to leave this up? And, okay, perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to share also. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we have Ryan Lata today. And in a second, I'm going to go ahead and introduce him. Um, but I'm going to take you through a few things just to get us started. Um, and I am coming to you from a 13-inch MacBook. It's my one screen, and I'm trying to navigate Zoom and all the other things I want to show you, so apologize up front for the clunkiness. Um, but you, you are at a Coaching Agile Journeys event. We've been doing this for about three years, a bunch of volunteers. So you'll see our co-hosts on. We have Isaac, we have Lori, and Mark. I think that's all for today, but we also have Heidi and, and Jeff, who weren't able to join us. Um, we're all volunteers. We have a uh, passion for Agile and all that goes with it, um, the culture and all of that kind of stuff. And it brought us together and um, brought this community together, which has, has grown uh, pretty strong. I'm sharing my website or our website um, on my screen here. So if you come here, there's all sorts of stuff you can find. Um, we're going to talk about Ryan's uh, talk here in just one second. Just wanted to show you around a little bit on our website. If you come here, um, you can get to all of our videos. You can also buy us some coffee. So we're volunteers, but there are expenses that come with this. So um, if you want to donate, that would be uh, very appreciative. Um, and you can see our upcoming events on here as well. We're also um, working with the Open Leadership Network. Um, so we, we really believe in this open approach and inv invitation over imposition. And that's what the Open Leadership Network stands for. So some of the events that we Hosts are actually in partnership with Open Leadership. Check out that website, it's pretty cool. They have symposiums, um, in fact, one I think next month over in Europe um, and more uh, to come in the future. Also, Agile Online Summit. Um, we are, Isaac, what is the technical title? Are we, we're not sponsors, what are we? We, we are promoters. Promoters. Um, so over on the, they have a page over there for people who promote them. So we're, we're working together with them to get the word out. Yep. Perfect. Um, and so if you go check this out, it's basically like um, a, an online version of those big agile conferences that people go to. So just trying to spread the wealth of knowledge um, without people having to travel all over the world. So check that out. Getting really close, Ryan. Don't leave us yet. <laughs> Ryan's like, it's my turn. Um, in uh, next month, October, we're looking at October 7th, we're actually going to have Gil Broza come and speak. Um, and so this is, this is Gil's site. He wrote The Agile Mindset and The Human Side of Agile. Great books. If you haven't read them, check them out. Um, and we'll have more to come on that. Not exactly sure how that um, talk is going to go, like what, uh, what the topic is going to be and, and such, but we'll, um, it, I'm sure to, it's around the open leadership aspect of things. Um, so check that out. Be on the lookout for when that's coming. Um, and then today we have Ryan speaking on how to tune up your stand-up. So Ryan uh, did this talk at Lean Agile US. Uh, it was very well received and Heidi from Coaching Agile Journeys attended it and invited him to come and, and do an online version for us. So um, with that, I think I'll go ahead and introduce you, Ryan. I won't make you wait any longer. Um, and Isaac does have a Slido poll um, and Slido questions going. So keep an eye on the Zoom chat, we'll drop that link in there so you can go ahead and pose some questions. So with that, I will stop sharing and Ryan, we'll let you take it away. Great, thank you. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Um, just like was just said, I, I gave this talk at Lean Agile US uh, and it was the first time I'd ever given this talk and it seemed to go over pretty well. And uh, as I was just joking, Heidi cornered me afterwards and said, that was great, will you do it for my group? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever you want, that's great. I'm gonna go run in my hotel room and hide. Uh, and she was serious, and so here I am to give give this give the same uh, information to you all. And I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly. We have 60 minutes ish, and I want to make sure you all have time for your questions. When I saw that Slido poll about what you all are looking to get out of this, I think I think I feel good because this talk is built for most of those things. Um, so let's let's get through it, and then uh, I'll I'll help you with whatever questions you have. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and see if I can do this do this thing all right let's go all right am i good sharing is that working cool. looks great cool so here we go welcome to tune up your stand up um and so what this what this talk is about is something that i've seen for for quite some time with teams where we wind up with this this sort of feeling where when you say well 
you know, what is your stand up, your daily scrum? They say something like, well, it's just another, another status report meeting. And that's kind of heartbreaking to hear if you're a passionate scrum master or a coach. Like that's not really what it was about. And so I, <clears throat> I wanted to, to sort of figure out what I could share about um, daily scrums or, or standups that could maybe change that from, from this, it's just another status report meeting to, to a meeting that people would actually choose to attend. And that's kind of an interesting test, right? If, you know, um, I'm sure many people have seen like the stragglers that come in like five minutes after their 15 minutes have started and they're like, oh, I was just doing other work or whatever. Like they're, they're making a choice, right? One is more important than the other. But if they were there because they wanted to be there, what would that mean? Like what would have to happen in 15 minutes for it to be that important? And that's kind of what I wanted to get to with this. And uh, the reason why stand-ups, right? There's plenty of events in Scrum to worry about, but um, daily scrums are like this often underutilized thing. And to me, you know, they're, the, the 15 minute daily scrum is like, it embodies all of scrum and you get 15 minutes to pull that off. You know, you get your, you get your, your empirical work. You get to see what happened yesterday and inspect and adapt. You get to work towards a sprint goal. You have full collaboration. Like you have all that built into 15 minutes. So that's a really cool thing when it gets, gets going. And that's why I wanted to put this together for people. So that's what I'm going to go through. Uh, essentially a series of tips and techniques that I use with teams that in about two months, so this is a two month plan, uh, can kind of turn into this meeting that people actually want to go to instead. Um, and it accomplishes its purpose. So before that, uh, the obligatory about me section, which I'll keep it pretty light. Um, Cause I don't, I don't, I'm not going to talk about where I work or what I do or anything like that. I'm just going to talk about what I'm passionate about. So this is me. Uh, if you ever see a picture of me online, this is the picture you will, you'll see of me. Uh, which the question I always get is, what is that? Uh, that is a, a grilled squid. Um, it is. It was horrifying to eat. I, I don't mind saying it, but this is my picture. This is this is who I am professionally, and it really irritates consultants. These are like, don't you have one with a nice suit jacket? I'm like, absolutely not. Um, I have a I have a blog that is embarrassing. It's there, um, and it was shown just a minute ago, which now reminds me I need to go redesign it again. Uh, and a, a LinkedIn thing, and and then my Twitter handle, which is. The, the best way to get a hold of me pretty much forever is right at the top right. It will be on every slide. But um, first thing I want to say is you can always reach out to me about anything and I will try to answer. That's just a blanket statement and I'm serious about it. Um, so professionally speaking, my mission is to kind of create teams that change the world, which sounds a bit ridiculous and like something written on a corporate wall somewhere, but it's what's true for me. So, and the way I think about it is it's a scoping issue. So if I can change the world for just one person, one, one serious, impactful relationship for one person, that's worthwhile. And if I do it for multiple people, then I may have changed the world for one team. If that team then takes that same idea on and says, well, can, could we change the world for a stakeholder, uh, a user, a manager, anyone, could we do that? And they do it, that's great. If they keep doing it for more and more people, maybe it's a division, a community, a, a customer segment and so on. And they're well on their way to changing the world. So that's who I am professionally. That's my passion. Personally, um, I have my family. I have a wife and a nearly four-year-old and I'm expecting my second son in November, which is exciting and terrifying, uh, but they're by far the best part of my life. Um, also bees. Um, I really like honeybees. I've always been fascinated by them. Um, when I have to do a short talk, I usually will avoid giving a bee fact, but since I have a little more time, I'm going to give one, um, which is just, I just think they're fascinating. So. Um, there's usually a metaphor that goes around about like busy as a bee or those are the worker bees. Some kind of analogy like that is pretty common here in the U.S. Um, and I, this is my little goofy one about it. So the, the, the worker bee in a beehive, it's a, it's a female. They're, the males are killed off every year. <laughs> but the females do all the work. They change jobs. They just decide what they do. They're completely self-organizing. And the queen actually has no control over anything. Her job is to lay eggs and keep the hive alive. That's what her, she does. She has no control or influence, really. Um, and so the, the worker bees take care of her. They feed her. They clean her. They do all the work that's required. And at some point, the queen is going to run out of steam, essentially, for what she's doing. So the worker bees will go and replace her they'll go make a new queen and kill the old one. So whenever I wind up with a particularly controlling manager that uses like a, those kind of metaphors, I'm like, by the way, did you know that in nature, the workers wind up murdering and replacing the queens just as a, just as a heads up. But that's a little bit of B fact for you. Um, but I'm really fascinated about it. Hope to get my first set of hives this year. Um, also, I love games, games of all kinds. 
card games, board games, tabletop, video games, you name it. I'm super excited about them. Um, these are all topics you can get me talking about for a long period of time. So that's all I'm gonna say about them and let's get into the meat of this thing. Um, <clears throat> so when we're talking about daily stand-ups or daily scrums, and if you're someone that really wants to be precise about the language, this talk may be a bit infuriating because I'm gonna use stand-ups and daily scrums interchangeably. Um, the, uh, the first thing that I wanna do, and like I said, this is a two month plan. Um, the very first thing that I wanna talk about is for a meeting to be one that people are going to choose it needs to accomplish a purpose. And more than likely, you need to start by clarifying the purpose. And so here's the purpose that I use to, to describe a daily scrum, and I think I got this from Lisa Atkins. So the purpose of a daily scrum is to begin the day's coordination and collaboration towards your sprint goal. That's the daily scrum. Purpose. And so what I do with this is every scrum, and this is quite literally how I'll do it. Um, you know, I'll go into the room and I'll say, welcome to the daily scrum. The purpose of the daily scrum is to begin the day's coordination and collaboration towards your sprint goals. Begin. That's quite literally how I do it. Um, and why two weeks? Um, that's just in my experience, just a, I, I'm looking for a, a time when people are beginning to, like this is beginning to soak in. And I say it for two weeks because I want that to be in the room as we begin the daily scrum every single time. I want it to just be there and be present. In about two weeks, I'll begin to detect that it's sinking in. Not that they can rehearse it back, but it's starting to absorb. Um, and that's kind of why I do it. Two weeks, may, your mileage may vary, but that's sort of what I see. Now, you may be inclined to want them to, to, to test them and say, hey, who knows the purpose of the daily scrum? Generally not, I've, I've made this mistake. Generally not a good idea to, to put the team on a test pass fail scenario. Um, they'll just happily be quiet and make, make me look stupid. So how do I find out this did sink in? A um, Couple of things. One is I usually have one-on-ones with everybody that it's, that's on my teams. So I can detect it through that, that uh, mechanism, whether they're sort of like becoming more purposeful in their action as opposed to more form based in their action. Like, oh, I have to do this because it's in the rules, like as opposed to, well, isn't the whole point to do whatever. And then I just watch the team when I'm around them. And the, 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 the phrase I actually do look for is, well, isn't the whole point to, and whatever they say after that is a purposeful statement. That's a statement that's about purpose. And so once I begin to hear that coming up or I hear it in a daily scrum, I, I realize now it's clicking. That's, that's uh, sinking in now. Now the, now the purpose is beginning to take shape in the room. So that's the big one, uh, clarifying the purpose. Do it for two weeks every single morning. Uh, and I'm watching for that. I'm watching for that. Uh, well, isn't the whole point of this to blah? And yes, that might be it. Um, so that's this. And this is one of two major changes that I do. There's a lot of little things, but this is one of, one of the two big ones, um, which I'll get to in a minute. So that's clarifying the purpose. Let's move into the, the more fun ones. Break the rules. This is the second thing I'll do is I'll break the rules. So, uh, when I said I'm using daily scrum and stand up interchangeably, there's a reason why, because the very first thing I'll do is have a seat. <clears throat> so everyone knows that you have to stand up in your daily scrum. You have to stand. And I'll be the first person to go sit and plonk down very, very visually, just sit in a seat. And they'll be like, you, you can't do that. And like, yes, I can. I'm an adult. Um, and why do you think we can't sit? Like, isn't, isn't the whole point of standing just to make sure we're being brief and to the point and accomplishing a purpose? But if I can do that sitting, like I'm pretty sure the agile police won't arrest me. Like we're okay. So I'll sit down, I'll begin to break the rules. If they sit, I'll stand. Like I'll just do something that is visibly different than what they're used to doing. And they will have a conversation about it. And they'll say, that's ridiculous. You can't do these things. And the whole conversation I wanna have with them is maybe this meeting is something that we, we get to choose how we make it. This is what we make it into. So if standing is gonna be a hallmark of this meeting, let's be intentional about saying so. If it's not, okay. So what are the other things that are important about this meeting? What are the things that actually aren't? I wanna show them that we have the ability to break the rules that everyone seems to have been taught, but no one can remember why and bring purpose back to all of them. So I'll show them it's okay to make a change. We can do that. And this sets the precedent for a whole lot of other things that are about to happen. Um, but that's one of the very first things that I'll do. And it's fun, not every team's gonna be like, well, he sits, I can sit. Some of them are gonna just defiantly stand. And I'm like, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. Like, it's actually not important whether you're sitting or standing. Do what you want. Um, so that's this one, pretty simple, but you can think about your own daily scrums and think about what are those sort of like weird forms that people follow without much thought, challenge them. 
do something different than that. And if you can still accomplish the purpose, neat, like great. And that's actually better than just saying, I follow the rules. Like there's no checkbox. There's no prize for that at the end. So this is the big one, along with clarifying the purpose. Um, this is the hub and spoke pattern. This, the, so that's the clarifying the purpose. And this one of the two biggest things to watch for in a daily scrum that usually turn them into something that's less effective. So if you can handle the purpose piece in this, these are the two that I would really emphasize taking home. So the hub and spoke pattern. Um, ironically, when I was trying to build the slides for this, I was trying to find some good pictures to represent the hub and spoke. And uh, it was, I went to all these, all these pictures through like Shutterstock and all these cover, like, uh, you know, your general photo people. And I couldn't find one that represented the hub and spoke. Couldn't find it. It was crazy. Every, every one of them didn't represent it, which blew my mind. Cause I was like, wait, even, even just random corporate photography pictures don't put this anti-pattern in place. <laughs> so here's what I found. I basically found Dr. Evil. This is a close thing I could find to represent the hub and spoke pattern. So here it is. So the hub and spoke pattern is, is this wagon wheel on the, on the left is what it's about. So everything in the room, everybody is talking to a central point, right? And this is not ideal. This is what turns it into a status meeting. And there are a couple culprits for the hub. Um, one culprit is a, a board, a tracking board. People have a tendency, if there's that physical thing, they'll just go and look at the board and not look at anyone else. And they'll talk about the work item and they'll talk to the board and they'll talk to their work item, but they won't talk to anyone. The other one, and this is the more troubling one, is when it's a person. And there's usually three culprits there. There's the scrum master, who's usually the, the, the major hub, a product owner or a manager. Those are usually the three that wind up as a hub, which means everyone, everyone is talking to them and not to each other. So that means there is no collaboration, like that's out of the room. And there might be coordination, but typically these people aren't there to coordinate, they're there to just hear. And they may think they're facilitating information, but it's one way. So we wanna, we wanna break this pattern. We actually wanna get the development team talking to one another by themselves. And breaking the hub and spoke is key to that. So I hope that makes sense for what the hub and spoke pattern is. And I, I also learned this from, um, where was this? Uh, Agile facilitation. I think it's a class also by Lisa Atkins, um, which was terrifying to go through. And I, I facilitated daily scrums in front of her and she was like whispering in my ear and I was like freaking out and shaking, but it stuck. Um, so here's the first thing. If we have a, if you, if you're watching your daily scrum and you see, watch their eyes, right? That's how you tell, watch everyone's eyes. If they're all looking at a thing or a person, you probably have a hub and spoke pattern. If it changes, you may not, but if it's always at one point, you have it. And that's what we want to change. So if you have a physical object, a tracking board, for example, get rid of the board, not forever. But for now, get rid of it. We want to take away the thing that's that central, that central fixation so that they're talking to one another. Later, the board can come back in as a tool to enable more collaboration, right? We want them to use the board, see information and make decisions about it, but that's only after they're talking to one another to coordinate and collaborate. So you're going to have to wait to see for that part first, where they're coordinating and collaborating before you bring another physical board back in so they can leverage the information. Up until then, they're just going to be fixated on it and what's in it and none of the rest will happen. So temporarily get rid of it. Now, if it's the other case where it's a person, uh, it gets a little trickier. Um, so I'm gonna make the case, I'm gonna make the assumption or I'm gonna talk about it as though uh, you're doing this for yourself. Um, if you have to coach another person on this, obviously the, it gets a little bit different, but the techniques will be the same. So the general rule of thumb here is out of sight, out of mind. So what you wanna do is that if you're a person that's, if you know, recognize there's one person that's the hub, you want to make sure that they start being invisible. If you're the hub, you want to get invisible and it's easier to control your own actions in this case. So here's a couple of ways to do it. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple extreme ways. It's going to be hard to see it from the, the camera, but we'll see what we can do. So the very first one is, um, and they're all a bit ridiculous. You're going to have to see it, get comfortable with that one. <laughs> so the first one is that you just make a hard look straight at your feet. So the way that would go is if, let's see, I'll just zoom down a little here. So if I came into the room and, and said, welcome to the daily scrum, purpose of the daily scrum is begin today's coordination and collaboration towards your sprint goal, begin. And I literally look right down. 
Now, if you want to be a little bit less super weird about it, you could grab your phone and pretend that you're messing with it. But the idea is that no one can talk to you anymore. No one wants to talk to the top of your head. They're going to find somewhere else to look because it's just weird. And that's good because now they're not talking to you. They'll want to talk to someone else who looks at them. So that's one technique. If that feels super weird, the other one is, again, you would just come in and say, welcome to the Daily Scrum. Purpose of the Daily Scrum is to begin today's coordination and collaboration towards your sprint goal. Just turn your back on them. Begin. And no one's going to want to look at the back of your head either. They're going to find somewhere else to look. They just don't. There's no point. It's like you're obviously not interested in what they're having to say. And they're probably going to say something like, what are you doing? My response is, you don't need me. Continue. Right? That's how I do it. So that's two. Uh, third way to do it. And this one's more of a broader facilitation technique that I'm going to make a little bit childish because that's how I do everything. Um, so when you're, when you're in a meeting and people are looking at you, my sort of gross analogy is I have all their eyeballs. They're in a little basket. I got them all. All those eyeballs are mine. And I can choose what to do with them because they gave them to me. So what I want to do is give the eyeballs to someone else, someone who should have them. And so I will physically walk to someone else, taking the eyeballs in my little imaginary basket, and then leave them there and turn around. And they'll look to the other person. And if I disappear right then, cool, I just dropped it. Why this is a broader facilitation technique is if you're in another meeting and you see like, you know, for example, people tend to sit with their own groups, right? So managers tend to sit together, developers sit together and so on. And this can make your meeting somewhat lumpy in terms of conversation that happens. Well, as a facilitator, you can collect the eyeballs. You can ask a question, collect them all, walk them to another part of the table that's not represented, plonk them down and get them talking again. So that's a broader thing you can use, but that's still the idea. Those are three ways you can break the hub and spoke patterns of a person, but they all are fixated around making it hard to see you. So you can look at your feet, you can turn your back, or you can just walk over to someone where they, they basically have to choose between two people and then fade out. Those are your three ways that, that I'll do it. And they all can be a little bit awkward and you'll get some questions, but again, it's not about me. Continue, right? So that's the big one. Uh, of the hub and spoke and the purpose, these are the two big ones. These will change your, your daily scrums the most. At this point, I also wanna bring out that everything that I'm suggesting, like even though I'm presenting it sequentially, you can do them all on day one. Like these, these can all just start. There's no, uh, there'll be a couple things that I'll say like, don't do this yet, but almost all this stuff you can do on day one. And I'll describe exactly how I coach through that, layering it all together. But that's this one. So this is the hub and spoke. This and the purpose of the two biggest ones. <clears throat> Let's move on to the three questions. Everyone's favorite. I don't know, I'm just saying that arbitrarily. Um, so one of the bigger questions that came up, and I think this is actually in the Slido, how do you keep it brief? How do you, how do you hold the time? So here's how I do it. I coach everyone to give their, give their answers within two breaths, um, which is super hard to do, but it's a fun game. Like people will give each other a little bit of teasing about it, but two breaths. And so here's how I do that. I'll say, welcome to the Daily Scrum. The purpose of the Daily Scrum is to begin today's coordination and collaboration to the sprint goal. The way in which we're going to do that is by answering three questions. The first question is, what did I do yesterday to accomplish your sprint goal? What did I do today to accomplish your sprint goal? And what's in the way of me accomplishing your sprint goal? And as you give your answers, I want you to try to keep them to one, two breaths. And it's going to be really hard, but just say the most important things. You're only beginning coordination and collaboration. You're not solving it. Just enough to continue the conversation. Begin. And I'll turn away. So that's how I do it. Two breaths. Um, and it's going to take time. This is a little bit of an awkward one, but many people take to it actually pretty quick. And especially when you start dropping the hub and spoke pattern, because when they realize they can talk to another developer, what they would have to say to them is completely different than what they were saying to me, for instance, where they had to give me a lot of context. Jira item 137, like no one cares. Like, well, yesterday I was working on that login module and it's jacked up. Oh, okay, we can talk later. Like it just, it's different. So that's why that can kind of work in context. And if you can emphasize the whole, we're only beginning and we can talk later afterwards, that makes the two breaths feel actually approachable. And in, in the beginning, you know, their, their first thing is going to be yesterday was Jira 137, today's 137, no blockers. That's what they're used to saying, probably. But with the dropping the hub and spoke and then this, they'll actually begin to say content. It'll become more of a story. And they're going to have to think hard about 
what's the most important thing for me to say? So this one takes a little bit of time. This is why it's a two month thing, but that's how I hold it to keep it short. And some people say, oh, well, this will only work for so big as teams. I've done this with like 17 people and still held 15 minutes. So it, this can work. Two breaths is about 30 to 35 seconds per person. It's fine. Like this scales out. This will hold your 15 minutes if you can hold the two breath game. So that's the first thing I'll do with the three questions. The next thing I'll do is I'll break the three questions. So uh, I'll add a fourth. And this is part of a bigger picture. So the, at some point I'll say, um, you know, like they're, they're doing the three questions, they're doing the, the two breaths well, I'll say, okay, let's add a fourth question. And you can have a whole breath for this one if you need it. Um, at the end, the fourth question is just name anything that went well for you yesterday. It could be work related or not, anything. It could be someone let you into a, a lane where you needed to go. Someone didn't take a parking spot. Someone held a door for you. Anything that went well for you. And the reason I want to do this is um, I want people to begin to see that, that things do go well for them because software teams are built to solve problems. So they tend to be very fixated on all the problems that exist and somewhat turn a blind eye to the things that are actually going okay for them. And so if you ever wanted to have a retrospective where you were turning up the good, they can't even see the good to turn up. So part of this is creating that sort of uh, awareness and training the ability to see what's good. And it is, it is trainable. So this is the fourth question to begin to build that. And once that starts clicking, I'll actually evolve it again and say, cool. Um, try to give some, uh, some appreciation for something that someone on your team has done. So after they start seeing good, now I want them to actually see the good in their teammates. And the reason I'm doing this is, I mean, this is just going to make a happier team in general when they start saying thank you to one another and appreciating each other, but they'll also begin to see strengths. They'll begin to see what, what each team member brings to the table beyond the work that they've been doing, maybe in isolation the whole time. And if you look at any study, almost every person is motivated by appreciation more than they are by many other things. So you can actually have this built in within your daily scrum that's still within 15 minutes. You can have this as a part of it. It's pretty easy to do. But these aren't the only questions you can ask. These are just some that I tend to, to rely on a lot. And after a while, I'll actually have the team pick their own questions, but we'll get there in just a second. So after this is going, I'll actually drop a grenade on them. <clears throat> so if, you, if everything is going great and you wanna just you know, set us back to zero really quick, uh, I'll reframe it and say, Today, we're only gonna answer one question. What will it take to accomplish our sprint goal? Or if we were doing Kanban, what will it take to, move the high, to pull the highest priority item to done? That's it, one question. And this one will grind everything to a halt because everything up until now, it's all about what did I do to contribute? And this question is only about the work. What will it take for the work to get done? And so now it's like not even about me. And so I have to think about, what it is that I'm going to do to that singular purpose. And that can actually take time because people are going to have to evaluate everything that they've been doing against that one thing. And it's going to be hard. So when you ask this question, um, I will ask it, shut up and then count to 10 very slowly. And that's just standard like facilitation, let the silence do the work thing. Um, but count to 10 super slowly in your head until, and that's the time where you might, after 10, more than likely someone's gonna say something. Um, but after 10, you can jump in and say, you know, you can start trying to help them out a little bit, but they'll almost always start speaking. But this one, this one is one to, to make sure people are completely aligned to either the most important or the sprint goal entirely. So this is one I'll, I'll weave in after I feel like they're getting pretty good with this, uh, the rest of the daily scrum. Um, and this is, I call this one the Kanban question, but this is one I'll just throw at them one day and then it'll completely wreck their daily scrum and that's fine. We'll talk about it, but it's, uh, it's just part of a bigger thing that I'll do where I just mix everything up on them. Cause it's again, like the purpose wasn't aligned to these questions. Like I, that's not the point. So I can mix it up and it, I found that most teams actually don't mind the variety and they enjoy it. Um, the Kanban question is, is hard, but they, they like mixing it up. They like the fourth questions. They like, they like the appreciations. And, you know, if they're going well, right, I don't even have to be there, right? I'm helping them get going, but I, I just start coming and going periodically. And so as I leave, I'll just tell them like, hey, if you all want to add a question, just 
someone make a suggestion one morning before you start, go for it, see what happens. And then I'll show up every now and then like, mind if I mess with you a bit? And they'll be like, please do. And I'll just throw something at them, right? Like they can turn this into what they need it to be. So that's about the three questions. Let's get on to impediments. So impediments, you know, that, that uh, your, today I worked, yesterday was year 137, today was 137, no blockers. That's the part we want to deal with next. Um, and so there's actually this thing where I, I find a lot of teams don't know what an impediment is, or they do, but they don't know how to qualify one. Is it big enough, small enough, so on. And so here's how I'll do that. Um, so I'll say, welcome to the Daily Scrum. Purpose of the Daily Scrum is being the day's coordination and collaboration towards your sprint goal. The way in which we're going to do it is by answering three questions. First question is, what did I do yesterday to accomplish your sprint goal? Today, what am I going to do to accomplish your sprint goal? And three, what's in the way of me accomplishing our sprint goal? Now, for this third question, you might be thinking, well, it is something in my way worth mentioning. I'll give you an example. I've been binge watching The Dark Crystal on Netflix every night. And so I'm coming into work pretty tired. That's going to get in the way of me doing my best work, right? That's an impediment. The reason I would say it is now you can know that I'm going to be operating at like 80%. You can come help me. You can take something off my plate. I could take something less difficult. If you never knew you couldn't do it, go, right? Like that's how I do it. I just, I just pick the most extremely pointless example that I can to make it okay to name things. And this won't happen overnight. They won't even recognize this as a thing, but I begin saying it this way just to make it okay, right? So what else do I do about impediments? The other thing I listen for is the word but. So an example would be like, so yesterday I was going to work on that login thing, but I had Windows updates for like four hours and I kind of got messed up. So today I'm going to try to get back to it and no blockers. And I was like, wait a second. Um, that whole Windows update thing, it sounds like it's messed you up. You're slowed down because of it. Well, yes. Yeah, I am. Cool. That's your impediment. Who can help? So that's it. I listen for that word, but, because I'll always say no blockers, but if I hear the word, but, I know they're about to say an impediment. And basically what I do is no more than two times within a daily scrum, I'll name it on their behalf. I'll kind of give them a small interruption and say, but wait, did I just hear this? Is that slowing you down? And if they say yes, who can help? That's the immediate response. Who can help? And so this is what I do to begin to sort of coach the team to pay attention to these things. And it takes time. This is another part why this takes two months. And what, are, what I'm really looking for here is, is without me doing that, at some point, someone's going to say the word but, or they're going to specifically name their own impediment, and someone's going to say, ooh, I could help you with that. That's, that's when this stuff is happening. That's when this is good. And there's that another like keystone moment that I look for. But this one, this one brings me to the next thing, which is how do I give feedback? Because as soon as they say, oh, I can help you with that, I will stop this daily scrum right there, full stop, and lavish them in praise. Because at that point, they have realized the purpose of a daily scrum. They've begun coordinating and collaborating on a way that's going to help them better accomplish their goal. They just did it. Even in that whole, like, I can help you, that's it. Mission accomplished in my book. That's it. And I will let them know that that's what the whole point of this is about. They've just done it. This is exactly what I was trying to do. So that's one of the major moments that I'll look for to do that. The other major one that I'll do is when they replan their sprint, which I think, I think that's one of those like textbook things that's supposed to happen, but rarely has it ever been seen. Um, but going down this path, I see this happen actually pretty much with every team they'll replan their sprint. So what happens is they, they go in and they start talking and they're talking about how they're going to accomplish their sprint goal. At some point, someone's going to say, you know, I don't think we need to do any of this to do the sprint goal. I think we could just do this other thing and it's probably good enough. And the team's going to look and say, oh, can, can we do that? And I'll say, yes, don't surprise your product owner. And they'll replan and they'll choose a different scope suddenly. And it's smaller and it's simpler and it's more, more uh, achievable. Because usually one of the catalysts is the sprint's closing and they're not quite there and they're feeling a little bit nervous and they're like, oh, we could do this thing. And that's it. They replan their sprint right then because they realize there's an alternative to accomplishing their sprint goal than the scope they had originally decided. And that's supposed to happen. And that's another moment where I will stop them dead in their tracks and say, y'all deserve to take the day off. You nailed it. Congratulations. You win. Like, 
uh, as far as I'm concerned, you've got this, you've got this. That's exactly what I want to see. Um, and I'll just shower them in praise and that's it. But beyond that key moment, like there are little things like after the daily scrum that I'll give little, little tiny little observations on things like, hey, you know, I really, I really appreciated how you, you know, you, you held the two breaths really, really well. Like you spoke to, so you spoke to your team and you held the two breaths. You said just enough and now you're going to continue your conversation. That's good. Right. I'll offer little things like that after the daily scrum, but those are the two things that I'll interrupt the daily scrum to give feedback on. Last thing, how do you get feedback? You're going, you know, this crazy weird bald guy gave you all this advice. How do you know it's working? Right. So <clears throat> a couple of things that you can do is, um, you know, I have one-on-ones with everyone, so I get feedback from lots of channels, but if it was specifically targeted for the daily scrum, what I would do is ask for five more minutes. Now, because we're very serious about the 15 minute time box, I'm very serious about five minutes, right? I'm not gonna hold them to this five, 15 minute time box and then take a five minute check or do 20 minutes of conversation. It's very serious. And I, I, I'll just <clears throat> ask a question, a very simple question, like what's something about this daily scrum that you think is worth keeping? What's something that you think we should change? And I'll just, hear what they have to say for a few minutes. And that's feedback. That's all I'll hear. It's just very qualitative, you know, <clears throat> that's it. And that gives me information about where they are and what changes we may need to make, things I may not be observing. That's, that's one very simple way to do it. And they can do this a few times. Now in the two month time scale for this, I may do this maybe two or three times in two months because I don't, I don't want to make this a very heavy thing. I just, these are very small, very small tweaks. So I don't want to make it habit that we have a five minute mini retro after every daily scrum. I want it to just be a quick little, how are we doing? Right. The other one that's a little heavier, but I'll do this maybe twice in two months is a return on time invested exercise. So really simply, I'm just going to ask them like, you could have spent your 15 minutes doing anything, but you spent it here. So how was your return on that time? Right. On a scale of one to five, one being absolute waste of your time, five being uh, you couldn't find a better way to use your 15 minutes. How would you rank? And they can do it anonymously or not. You know, anonymous is probably the appropriate way, but if you can imagine going through all this with your team, you don't really need to do anonymous stuff if probably they're healthy and safe at this point, but pay attention to that and then rate it. And I'll do it twice, once sort of like early-ish days and then once towards the end. And usually I'll see like a bunch of threes in the beginning and then by the end it'll be fours and fives, right? And I'll show them that at some point, like, it's 15 minutes, right? Like we can, we can do something with it. But uh, that's the other way I'll get feedback really quickly. And that's a little more quantitative, but that's actually it. This is my, my, my sort of hit list, two month hit list to get your, your daily scrums going. So the first one is clarifying the purpose. The second, break the rules so that you can show it's okay to change the things. Three, break the hub and spoke pattern. And that with clarifying the purpose of the two big ones. Um, mess around with the three questions. Like, change them, add the fourth one, evolve, evolve noticing good things to gratitude, try the Kanban question and ruin everyone's life. Um, start helping them see impediments by helping name them. Not, not overtly, but maybe two times per daily scrum. That's about it. Just name them, get them to say it themselves. Get feedback when things are going well, like when they do name their own impediments and solve them and when they replan their sprint. And use things like uh, our return on time invested exercise or just ask for five minutes to get some, get some feedback. And this is about two months. And in my experience, this, this really sticks. Um, and so that's about it. I wanna say thanks. And uh, got time for questions. Uh, and I want to seed one question into the room because I always forget to do this during the talk. Um, how do you do this? How do you do some of this with a remote or distributed daily stand-up? So I have a thing for you. So if you vote for that question, I'll give you a little, little nugget there too. But otherwise, thank you. And uh, let's get to some questions. Wow, Ryan, that was fantastic. Um, and you know, what's funny is you actually nailed, uh, that is one of the questions, uh, how do we do this with a remote audience? Um, it's not up at yep. the top there, but uh, I'll definitely encourage everyone, follow the link over in the chat and you can uh, throw your questions in there or upvote the ones that you want. Oh, well, Ryan, I said that, but I, it just exploded. So the number one question right now is, is how do you engage uh, collaboration and work with a distributed team, you know, doing it over video conference what do you, what do you, and it's got like 10 uploads right now. So what do you do with that space? Yeah, so um, it, it, the, the, the trick that I've found with the, the remote stuff is it, it almost, like it's really hard to not have the hub and spoke thing because someone's always like, you go next, you go next, you go next, which, which is the hub and spoke because now everyone's talking to the person who's quarterbacking the whole thing. 
And so what I do is this is this is the adjustment I make is I'll say, all right, anyone who wants to can begin, but when you're finished, you have to say the name of the person who goes next. And that does two things. One, everyone has to know who's on the call, which no one ever knows who's on those calls. They only know that they're on the call and they don't know if anyone else is there, right? Like there's this thing where people use, for dysfunctional meetings, people use calls as a sort of an anonymous game. But if you say you have to name the next person, you actually have to know who's in the, in the room with you. People who have an anonymous phone number, you have to pay attention to who's there. You have to hear the names. You can't call on them if you don't know they're there. So you have to be engaged at that level. The second thing is people tend to tune out and they'll do their work, do their work, wait for their thing and then start. Well, if they don't know when they have to go because they don't know when they're gonna get named, they have to listen the entire time. They have to pay attention because they could get called any second. Now there is a risk when doing this that like if I start and I say begin, I'll usually, I might say the first name, but I try never to do it. Um, but there is a, there is a tendency for another, like the same person always starts and they always call the same person. They always call the next person that can happen, but that's when you can show back up and just pick someone else to start it and miss it. That just messes them all back up again. So that's what I do. And that sort of takes a hub and spoke element back out of a, a remote daily scrum. And it allows me to also not have to do the whole thing myself. And that tends to work out pretty well. Excellent answer. Thank you, Ryan. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so our next question is, it seems the chicken and pig analogy has gone by the wayside. Do you allow product owners to talk in the daily scrum? So, yeah, uh, yes, I do. So um, here's, here's the, I have, a, I have like these weird paradoxes I deal with all the time. So the rules as written are that the daily scrum is for the development team, which means it's their meeting their attendance list. Now that does mean that I'm not even invited if I'm a scrum master or a coach and the product owner isn't invited as well by default. Now, almost inevitably, they want us in the room because we have important information. And so, yes, uh, as soon as they realize it, uh, the, same, the same rules apply to everybody. Now, what the product owner may give is probably more insight about what's coming up or what's happening in context, but the team usually prefers to hear that every single day than just at a, you know, a really tough refinement or planning meeting. So it's usually pretty common that they do want them in the room. They just want to make sure that they're interacting in the same ways that everyone else is. And that's usually pretty straightforward to do because how do I put it? Everyone wants this stuff to work. It's usually not much of a, there's usually not much of a challenge with that as soon as everyone understands the same things. Excellent. Good answer. Thank you. Uh, so another one uh, that came in, do you follow the same process? You had your, your two month process. Do you follow the same process for teams that are already up and running and established? What if they think they already know the purpose and returning to the basics is beneath them, right? So they've been going for a while. Ah. They feel like they've got all the answers. So yes, I do this with established teams as well as brand new teams. And when I, when that very first, the second thing I said where I break the rules, that's specifically for the people who think they've got this figured out. Because as soon as I go in and do something different than what they've been doing for the past two years, it's some trainer or consultant told them, this is how you have to do it. And I do something completely different and it's not awful. Now we can have a conversation about why, why are we doing it the way we're doing it and what alternatives exist. I'll usually also have a, um, a conversation around the things that you do that aren't actually a part of Scrum. Like, you know, User stories aren't in Scrum. Why are you using them? Acceptance criteria doesn't exist. Why did you choose to use that, right? Like all these best practices, are they helping you or are they form? Like, let's talk about it. And the daily Scrum is just one of those things for me. Excellent. All right, when team members start talking about those three questions, most of the time, the other team members focus on what they're going to say, right? So it becomes like a status meeting. What are some ways that you have of breaking up that, that fixation on the words I'm going to say while everyone else is giving the report? Um, I don't actually worry about that. Um, <clears throat> Cause how do I put it? That's actually a level of engagement and I, I don't worry about it. And that, how do I put it? If everyone's worried about what to say when everyone's talking to each other because there's no hub, then that's actually okay. 
And the two breath thing is a, as much as it is stressful to do, it's a training mechanism to only say important things. So it's actually harder to prepare for what you need to say because you can basically just blurt out a few keywords and everyone knows the story the whole time because it's every day we're talking about the same thing. So it's less stressful over time, but I generally don't sweat it. It tends to work itself out. Um, and that's, it's funny that that was a question because I, I deal with that a lot, but I only deal with that when I'm not using these same techniques. When I use this stuff, it tends to just like, that's never a concern where people are like, I don't even, I don't know what I'm going to say in my daily stand up. Like that doesn't even matter because it's kind of a mini working session. They don't really worry about it anymore. So it's, to me, that's an interesting question because it's making me think, should I have been more diligent about this with my teams? Crap. Like I, I don't know. That's, that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So this is good. So another question, and I might have a second parter uh, to this one um, after you've answered the first part, but how do you deal with a product owner that takes over the daily standup? Ah, um, I'll give the really small pithy answer. I will throw them out um, because they're not invited. Like that's the first rule is they're not invited. The team has to invite them in. If I'm their scrum master, then I'm going to to, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to be really uncomfortable about it. I have thrown directors out of meetings before and it's super uncomfortable, but I will do it. Um, and then, you know, that daily scrum is ruined. It is gone. Like it doesn't even matter what we're going to do. We're going to have a conversation about what just happened. Um, and then I'll go because, and this is the other thing I, I, I didn't emphasize it too much, but this is also why I have one-on-ones with everybody, including product owners, because to have that happen like out of the blue like that can be pretty tough to deal with. But if I have a one-on-one -on -one and I've been having them already, then, then there's a, that's part of a bigger conversation about why, why did I have to excuse you from the room? Why is this important? And the same thing with everyone else. So the, the pithy answer is I'll get them out of the room, but there's, you know, things like one-on-ones, the things like ongoing coaching and everything else is actually what makes that an okay thing to do. But I, I broadly, I mean, I don't want to be like too legalistic about it, but I think the rules exist for a reason in that case. And I'll go back to them quickly. Um, but the, the, the product owners that take over teams is a very common anti-pattern. And usually, usually there's another thread in there that I should bring up. Uh, I kept saying sprint goal over and over and over and over again for a very specific reason. What I didn't say was, how are you going to meet your commitments? Because that's not in Scrum. That's gone. That, is, that, is, that was gone uh, in 2011. So talking about sprint commitments, if we're doing scrum is off the table for me. So if we're talking about a goal and the product owner's worried about what's gonna get delivered, there's a mismatch. That means we don't understand how we work with a goal and that need for daily status updates is probably a symptom of that. But if we understand the concept of a goal, then it usually, again, that, that helps with all this. That's really good. So let me add a, an additional tag on to the end of that question. So what if you have a team member who is taking over your daily standup? So maybe someone you shouldn't throw out of the room. How do you handle that? Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's usually two cases that I see there. One is they, they, I mean, to be indelicate about it, they just love the sound of their own voice. Um, and the, the two breath rule exists for those people as much as everyone else. And that's why like when you give the rule, everyone's like, oh, that's great. Cause there's usually that person and everyone can make fun of them about it. Like, well, that was like six breaths, man. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Could you do it in four next time? Like we can mess with it. Um, the other thing is, is there, there is a, uh, there's an archetype that tends to exist. And I, when I said the three people that create a hub, you know, it's your typically your scrum master product owner or manager, the, 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 the uh, unlikely fourth is like that tech lead. Uh, that very, very dominant technical person who wants to run the team on some form or fashion. So if it's a hub and spoke pattern, the same things would apply, like pull them aside or you can move other people in front. <laughs> it's another way you can do it, but you, you try to make them less visible so people can talk to other people, but the two breath thing helps is that it's like a collective rule to keep it down. Thank you. All right. This is a good one. How do you get team members to hold each other accountable when a user story is just not moving day after day? So user story someone's got and it's just stuck. Um, how do I put it? Uh, I, I want to, there's a couple things in there. So these questions are always hard. So, um, hmm. so a couple of things. If the team is taking a sprint goal seriously, then the first question is, does that work aligned to the sprint goal? Second of all, if we're 
if that's the case, then the question that would come up is about impediments. What's actually taking so long? Now, it's not always visible and some people like to hoard work and many teams have been taught to work alone or in isolation most of the time. So to me, like it, it comes back to if a team starts talking to one another in their daily scrum, they're gonna hear about it and someone's gonna eventually say, can I help you with it? Because the team at some point is gonna say that they're going to try to accomplish this goal and they're gonna recognize the risk with the goal. Now, one of the things that helps with this is if you had to take the board away for a while, now it can come back in and we can begin to see things like that much more quickly. And we can say, how does this, how does this current status affect our ability to deliver on our goal. You can have that conversation after everything else, but if the team, the team is only talking about like my own, if the team is still fixated on what my work is, then that's never gonna change, right? They're gonna, they're gonna feel like they're okay, they just needed more time. But if they're actually gonna coordinate or collaborate and have a goal, they're gonna call, and it won't, they may not call each other out on it, but they'll begin to say like, so what's, what's going on with that? Like, we need that for this, what's going on? Like, they'll start asking because they can't avoid it after a while because they'll realize they don't, everyone, if everyone did all their individual work, but that key piece was missing, it didn't really mount for much. And that, that actually starts clicking in a daily scrum that goes well when they talk to one another, it happens by default. Got it. So you, you enable the conversation through these things that you shared with us and then focus on the sprint goal. And naturally that takes care of itself over time. Yeah, and I mean, there's other things like story slicing and all that other stuff that tends to help. One-on-one uh, -on -one stuff helps, but if I'm gonna if I'm gonna keep all this focused on how the daily scrum enables this, then that's where I would put the answer: is get them talking to one another and collaborating, and then they'll they'll have a conversation about it. Great. All right, what are your thoughts or experience of having a stand-up story? Or sorry, having a stand-up by story or by feature rather than by person? Ah, so. That goes back to the Kanban question, right? That's when you're talking about the work as a debt of the, uh, what each person did. And I think it depends, right? So there'd be an element in there where I would wonder like, is the sprint about accomplishing scope? If it is, be very, very clear about what the implications of that are because there is no, there is no partial place there. It's all or nothing. And that's a very dangerous place for a team to live in. And that's why we use sprint goals. So if you can do that, then scope is flexible right? Scope can flex every single day to be more appropriate for the goal based on what we've seen. So if it, that's the case, then yes, you can have that conversation in a very healthy way. If you're doing Kanban, then absolutely. We have the most important thing we need to work on. Why do we have everyone working on everything else? What's it going to take to pull it? What would it take to pull the next one, right? You can have that conversation very clearly, but that's the Kanban question is what would it take to accomplish the goal? What would it take to accomplish this most important thing? And it's definitely a way to do it. Um, I would say, I don't, I don't have a preference about better or worse because they both kind of teach different things to teams on how they should work and see things. The, the Kanban question is really interesting if you couple it with a whip limit. Um, but that's a, that's a much bigger topic than I think we have time for. Yeah, yeah, these are great. We'll, we'll handle maybe two, maybe three more questions here as we, as we go through them. Mm -hmm. uh, Along the same lines, th this next question follows up with the last one. Do you, do you ever encourage like a walk the board technique? Uh, would you ever use that going just through all the stores on the board or really just keep focused on that sprinkle? Uh, I would only consider that after I knew they didn't have a hub and spoke pattern. Because uh, if I put that in the room, the board's the hub. They're going to talk to the board and not to each other. And uh, so that's, that would be it. Like I don't, that board should be a tool where they can begin to see the impediments. They could begin to see priority. They could begin to see uh, areas that they could coordinate better. But if they're not talking to each other first, that board is a waste of their time. Just like in the same thing, like if they were like, do you use a burn down or anything else to, to see how they're doing only, only after they're talking to one another, because before that, that is a, that is a cudgel to beat a team with and not a tool that they're going to use. So yes, it's fine. I just, I would only bring it in after they're, they've really got themselves figured out. Great. And I'm really glad this someone asked this next question because I actually deal with this myself. How, how do you deal with people who maybe don't have to attend the standup, right? But they come in and then as everyone's giving their updates, they just kind of say, uh, no updates. And in my case, it's even a team member who just no update on what's going on there. What do you do with people who come in and, and just say, I have nothing to share. I'm just here to watch. 
uh, how do I put it? It's fine. It's fine. Like, and, and here's why, right? Like paradoxically, I'm okay with it because the questions are about how are you accomplishing your sprint goal? So theoretically that answer is I'm not doing anything to help us accomplish our sprint goal. There's a very short fuse for that for most teams. If they perceive there's dead weight or someone who's not going to like, that's going to hoard information, like whatever, that team is going to come to me pretty quick about it. Once they're fixated on a sprint goal and working together and someone's like, I got nothing. Like that really doesn't last very long in that world. They'll police that out very quickly. Um, now it could be that just, I don't think I have anything to share because if, you know, status quo, nothing has changed. Um, and that's okay. Cause it's for them. If they're okay with that, that's actually fine. It's that other case that I usually see more often when like, I don't have anything to say to this group, whatever. Like that's, that's the one that I, I'm more concerned about. And that's usually like individuals, no sprint goal, no coordination, none of that's there. And that's when that happens. But when the team starts clicking, they'll, they'll root that out or come tell me in secret. That's awesome. And then Ryan, we're going to end up with one last question. And uh, I got to say, uh, this is our appreciation for how much you've shared with us today. Um, so the question was, how did you learn all these creative ways of keeping things fresh? Experience? Some other way you can suggest that we can get ideas like this? Is there, is there something you followed? Or, or how did you come up with all this? Because this has been very valuable, applicable techniques. How did you get so smart? So I I, I, I referenced a couple things with Lisa Atkins, right? So she, I took her facilitation class, which is very, very helpful. Um, and then uh, the purpose of the meetings also came from some of her material. And I, I'd say beyond that, um, I kind of, I kind of bumbled my way through this over the years. Um, so I don't, I don't have a lot of other places I can, like, I'm not saying I, I didn't, I wasn't inspired or didn't take things from people i just can't i can't place them anymore if that happened or maybe i was inspired but this is just stuff that sort of evolved over time for me uh, mostly uh so i unfortunately i don't have a list of sources i can give for a lot of it um the least Atkins stuff is there um which her her coaching agile teams curriculum is absolutely transformative and i highly recommend it but um Beyond that, most of this was just sort of mistakes and thinking deeply about 15 minutes. Well, I'll say your attitude is genuinely refreshing. There is so much has to be done this way. You know, we can't try anything out of the norm. Your, your approach and the way that you are really empowering teams, um, it's refreshing to me to, to hear your attitude and the way you think about your role in helping teams. So that's, that's really sad. Well, thank you. Yeah. Terrific. So I'm going to jump in and wrap us up. Um, so thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, really insightful. And I, I do have to say, I, I have this sense that the part of how you came up with all of this is understanding the intent behind all of the practices that get published out there, right? Like you're figuring out your own way to, to get there. Um, so great lesson. Let's go with that. That's great. Um, so thank you very much uh, to everybody who's here. Thank you for joining us. We will post the video and the um, presentation. Um, so those will be able to, uh, you'll be able to find them on our website. Also, I sort of randomly dropped in a link um, and a message a few minutes ago uh, about Gil Broza. So I mentioned October 7th, Gil Broza will be here um, speaking for us. He recently published a blog post about uh, imposing Agile being a non-starter. Um, and that's the link that I dropped in the chat. Uh, and I believe that's the talk he's going to be kind of targeting um, when he joins us October 7th. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and close us out. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, especially, Ryan. This was fantastic. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. It's great. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.